Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back. So today we are going to be talking about Hive Nightmare, also known as Serious Sam. It's a new local privilege escalation in Windows that seems to have been around for a while, possibly, but it's just been discovered. And I found some proof of concept exploit code on GitHub. So hey, let's play with it and see what we can do. All right, so the concept of exploiting this is actually pretty simple to understand. If you've ever used a utility like Secret Stump, or if you've ever extracted NTLM hashes through a SAM database on a, on a Windows machine, that then, then this will seem familiar to you because really that's all that we're doing. However, in those traditional methods, the way you've probably done it in the past, you, you've usually had to have local administrator access to that computer first. Once you had admin access, then you could dump the SAM uh, and you'd be able to pass hashes around or try to crack them and all that stuff. What makes this attack really, really cool and why they're calling a, a privilege escalation is we don't need administrator access in our case because what this vulnerability is, is really, it's the fact that this built-in users group has read access to the entire registry and that includes the sensitive areas that, that store user credentials. So what we're going to do is we're going to leverage this proof of concept code that Kevin posted. Follow him on Twitter, shout out to Kevin. Um, he posted this and it's available on GitHub. I'm sure there's gonna be some better exploits that come out of this. I take no credit for any of it. But if you go out to his GitHub, you'd be able to pull down the, uh, the, the exploit that I'm going to use as my proof of concept. And he kind of has, you know, some readme that talks about what it's doing. But essentially, he's got this release here that's pre-compiled. So you can download this executable. Again, if you're going to be downloading any executables off GitHub, be, be caution, or take caution, I should say. Uh, you know, don't do this in a production environment. You, especially when it's a pre-compiled binary like this, you, you really don't know what, what it's going to do. So I wouldn't ever recommend you do this in production. Um, and, and when you can, do a code review and maybe consider compiling the, the code on your own. Regardless, we're going to blindly run it because what could go wrong in our demo environment, right? Um, so we'll just download this. And when we do that, that's going to allow us to access parts of the registry that contain user hashes. All right, so here we are in our lab environment. I'm just going to go ahead and get signed in as a, as a regular user account. Now remember, this issue that we're exploiting, it's a, it's a local privilege escalation. So we're going to go from a standard user and we want to get administrator rights. So in our example, we've compromised a, a user that doesn't have admin rights. We've got access to this machine. Now we're just looking to fully compromise it. So to kind of demonstrate to make sure we don't have admin rights, let's try to open up like an elevated PowerShell and we see we get hit with a UAC prompt. So that's not good. Try to go into a regular PowerShell window. And then we can do something like that user to see the list of users on the system. Let's see who we are. So we are this user user which is right there. So then we could do net user and then the username of us, which is user. <laughs> kind of confusing, but here we go. Okay, so now we can see the details about our user account and we can see we do not have any local or global group memberships. We're not a part of the local administrator group. All right, so this confirms we don't have admin rights. Now, that's okay because we know about Hive Nightmare and I've already went out and downloaded the public um, release exploit code from that GitHub profile or that GitHub repo I was showing you earlier. Uh, so really, we're, we're in a spot where we can just go ahead and run this. Now, before we do, I want to talk about some of the prereqs that are required for this to work. Um, really, the, there's only two prereqs. One is that you have what's called system protection enabled. And that's really just like to take shadow copies or if you've ever seen system restore if you've ever gone through a system restore in windows that that has to be running and enabled on your system and the reason is is because yeah while we have permission to read everything in the registry there's certain files that we're going to need to get to to pull out the ntlm hashes from a system uh, that we wouldn't have access to because the system's running those files are locked when the system's running so to get around that what we're going to do is we're going to look through the backups that we've already taken of those files because they're not live, they're not locked, we can just go and read through the backups. So that's what the, the application or what this exploit is programmed to do. 
So you have to have system protection turned on and you have to have at least one shadow copy or one system restore point already saved. And that's actually pretty common to see in most co uh, corporate environments because, I mean, let's, let's be honest here, system restore is super handy sometimes. Okay, so I've made my demo environment meet those prereqs. If you haven't, then you might run into issues running this exploit code. Um, but I will demonstrate afterwards how we can mitigate this in the meantime and how if you don't have those things enabled, how this doesn't work. I'll show you that at the end. So, all right, enough talking. Let's go into our downloads folder. We see Hive Nightmare in there. Let's just run it. All right. So we can see that it outputs some text here saying that the SAM Hive security and system Hive have all been saved to the current working directory. So if we open this back up, notice now we have three new files and they actually have contents. So that's awesome. So we've, we've actually taken those sensitive files or the sensitive hives out of the registry. Okay, so now that we've got these files, we need to extract the NTLM hashes out of them. So to do that, I'm gonna move it over to my Kali box um, and you can transfer it however you want. I'm just gonna do a quick drag and drop because that'll be the easiest way for me. Throw them into the folder I want them and then we can open up our terminal list of contents and we see them in here. So to actually extract the NTLM hash, it, it's really simple. Uh, we can use secret stump, secret stump.py, and we can read the help to, to get you know details about how to actually leverage this. And if you don't have this, uh, go check out Impacket. You can just literally go GitHub Impacket into Google, and you'll find it. It'll come right up, and you can install it. I don't know if it comes pre-installed with Kali uh, currently or not, but anyway, once you have that, we'll run secret stump. And then we just have to give it three flags. We're gonna do system and give it the system high file. We're gonna do security, give it the security high file. And then we're going to do uh, system security and then SAM, I almost forgot that. So then we'll come into SAM. And finally, you just have to give it the local flag at the end and that'll tell it just use these local files that you're providing. Check that out. So we were able to extract the NTLM hashes. Now this is great, but, but what does that mean? How is this actually a privilege escalation? Well, now that we've got these hashes, we can do whatever we want with them. We could try to take them offline and crack them with like Hashcat or something. Uh, but all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy this hash and I'm just gonna pass it to the machine that we wanna go to using something like psexec. So if I do psexec.py, you can specify the hash and then you just say the user account that you're looking to sign in with. So administrator in my case, at, and then whatever the IP address is of the box. So I think we come in here, we can do an IP config, 10.0.1.11. Paste that in. And finally, we want it to drop us into CMDEXE. Run that. Say, who am I? We're NT authority system. Do an IP config. We are definitely on 10.0.1.11. So just like that, we went from having standard user rights to now system level access. And we can do whatever we want, right? We've got administrator control of the machine and we fully compromised it. So pretty cool exploit. Um, obviously, I think there's gonna be a ton of improvements that get added to the exploit code as it gets developed more. I've actually already seen that Mimikatz has released something where it's built into Mimikatz now. So just, this is definitely something you wanna be aware of. There's probably gonna be more and more tools that start to integrate it. And it's gonna be something you wanna keep an eye out when you're looking to escalate privileges in Windows. Okay, so I said at the end, I wanted to show you how you can mitigate against this and also what happens if you don't have those prereqs met. So uh, let's just start by taking a look at the restore point. So if I go into create a restore point, We'll get it with a UAC prompt, and that's fine. I'm done doing the, the privesque explanation, so I'm just going to sign in as a, as a local administrator, which should be that. I hope. Maybe not. Well, that's no good. All right. Well, actually, <laughs> let's just leverage our, uh, our shell real quick to create us a new user account. I'm going to do net user new admin with a password of password123, add that. See, this is why hacking is sometimes good. You get locked out of your own stuff. So we'll come in, do this again. 
Oh, sorry. I got to do net user uh, administrator. What is it? Net local group administrator slash uh, and then the username, which is new admin. Ad? Did I do that right? I think I did that right. I think I just created that account and then put it in the local administrator group. We're going to find out. New admin, password123. Cool. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so um, right now you can see under system protection, we have it running here on the C drive. If we were to configure this, we could specify like how much storage space and blah, blah, blah. But we can also come in here and we can say delete all of the restore points. Now, you can do all this from the command line. I'm just showing it through the GUI because it looks better in video sometimes. So I'm going to go say, let's delete that. We'll go ahead and hit continue. Close that out. Say OK. Let's actually come back and we're going to disable system protection. Turn that off. So now it's showing auth. And one more thing that I'm going to do just to make sure it all got deleted. New admin, password, one, two, three. Uh, I think it's VSS admin, delete shadows off. No items were found. Okay, cool. Um, so this is just how you would delete out your shadow copies from the command line. I just wanted to make sure that they were actually all deleted. Because if you don't have a shadow copy and system protection is not enabled, let's see if we could try that privilege escalation technique again. So we'll come into our downloads. Let's delete these because those were the old ones change into downloads we see hive nightmare and we're just going to run it a second time and okay so we're getting all kinds of errors here so it tries to run and then it returns cannot open sam and then it's asking a system protection not enabled is the vulnerability fixed blah 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 so we could definitely see we've got different output this time and then when we look here while the files do get touched, there's no contents. We didn't actually export and save anything. So this exploit is not working. And that's because we disabled the, the system protection. We disabled system restore and shadow copies. So that's a, a quick workaround that you guys could consider implementing. Now, you may want to weigh the, the risk versus reward in your environment because Honestly, system restore might be something critical. If you don't have backups in other areas and you're relying on shadow copies, this may not be an option for you. Keep in mind, this is a, a zero day, um, and hopefully we'll see a patch come from Microsoft soon. Uh, but in the meantime, this is an option that you have to try to mitigate this issue. I hope you learned something. If you found this at all interesting and you're new, please consider subscribing. I love to, to have videos like this and I, I love this opportunity to just kind of talk about these exploits and learn about them myself. So um, any comments, feel free to leave them down below and I will see you guys in the next video.